Elon speaks to his minions at Starbase. We'll cover the highlights. Starbase aims to expand. Starlink goes country. And Acts 3 goes to the space station. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Last weekend, SpaceX shared an all-hands employee presentation that Elon Musk gave late last year concerning all things the company is up to, including Starship. So I'm going to share just a few highlights of the Starship specific parts of the video. The entire thing can be found on the company's X page. Elon began his speech explaining why the Starship program is important for humanity. Civilizations are anything but permanent. The many civilizations have risen and fallen over the years, over the centuries and millennia. Eventually the sun will expand, boil the oceans and destroy all life on Earth. It's only about maybe 10 or 20 percent of the existence of Earth itself. If Earth is four and a half billion years old, then another 10, 10, 20 percent longer and life would, or intelligent life would not have evolved. Because it's taken us a long time to get to this point. That's why time is of the, uh, time is of the essence. I think we want to make Mars self-sustaining as quickly as possible. It's not just a question of getting people to Mars, but it's getting enough tonnage and equipment to Mars to make enable Mars to be self-sustaining. And really, it's, it has to be, you know, it has to be humans, actually, because you know, uh, it's not going to be the dolphins. Um, so, but we can, bring, we can bring all the creatures with us, and we can ensure that life on Earth continues on Mars, uh, even after Earth becomes unlivable in the, in the distant future. Yeah, we just got to get it done before civilization ends, but, but I, like, I think, we, I think it's going to happen. If you would like to grasp just how deep and dark the things he just said really goes, unbeknownst to him, check out my latest Starship documentary. You can find it pinned to the top of my X page, link below in the description if you're watching on Rumble or YouTube. Many of you have seen it and wrote very supportive reviews and emails to me, for that I'm very much appreciative. Continuing on, Elon then briefly touched on the two towers of Texas. Construction of the second has already begun. And then we're also going to build a second tower. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to really be launching a lot and, up, and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we launch from another tower, so two towers is important. He also went over a few of the upgrades made between test flights. Uh, but one of the biggest upgrades was uh, going from uh, hydraulic to electric uh, actuation of the engines. So that actually uh, saved a lot of mass and complexity. It was just, a, this is one of the biggest upgrades. We also massively upgraded the heat shield. The engines themselves were massively upgraded. Literally everything on the rocket was, uh, like, there might have been thousands of upgrades between flight one and two. Then what exactly went wrong with Starship during the second test flight? Information we had not heard before. Fly, flight two actually almost made it to orbit. In fact, ironically, if, uh, if it had had a payload, it would have made it to orbit. Uh, because the reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was we vented the liquid oxygen, and the liquid oxygen uh, ultimately led to fire and an, ex and an explosion because we, we wanted to vent the liquid oxygen because we normally wouldn't have that liquid oxygen if we had a payload. <laughs> so ironically, if it had a payload, it would have reached orbit. What the near future looks like for the vehicle? Um, and we've got uh, yeah, a block, uh, sort of a version two ship uh, that will be more reliable, better performance endurance. We've got a, a version three ship uh, design that will stretch that, that be even taller, <laughs> probably end up being, I don't know, 140 meters before it's all said and done, maybe 150 in the end. That's 20 to 30 extra meters than what it is now. And what the up and coming test flight will include. Uh, flight three, we've got, uh, well, we want to get to orbit and we want to do uh, an, an in-space uh, engine burn uh, from the header tank and, and prove uh, the, that we can rel reliably deorbit. We want to do a tipping point uh, header domain uh, propellant transfer. Uh, this is uh, important for the uh, NASA Artemis program, and uh, we want to uh, also demonstrate the, the payload door for the sort of PES dispenser for um, delivering the Starlink, the, the, the V2 non-mini, actually probably V, I guess V3 technically, uh, but really the really giant satellites to uh, orbit. So more info on Artemis. So we also want to demonstrate uh, on-orbit refilling. This is uh, very important for the NASA Artemis program. Um, so we're very proud to be part of the NASA Artemis program. I'm always in incredibly grateful to NASA for their support um, and for trusting us uh, to do um, to take take astronauts to orbit, to trans take cargo to the space station, and to be an integral part of of getting astronauts back to the moon. 
During the presentation, some viewers may have noticed the brief shots with the HLS nose in the background, hatch included. And Elon shared a new image of the first EVA that will be attempted later this year during Polaris Dawn. We will actually uh, evacuate the whole spacecraft. So uh, everyone, even those that don't go on the spacewalk, will still be in vacuum. So, but I, I think, you know, obviously we're gonna put a lot of testing into this and, uh, but this, this is gonna be another significant milestone, which is to have a suit where you can be in like the, the vacuum of space with just nothing. In other Starbase local news, MyRGV released an article detailing SpaceX's proposed land swap with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. The company wants to expand the launch site. Both parties are considering the exchange of SpaceX's 43 acres for Boca Chica State Park's 477 acres. That yeah, sounds like a fair trade to me. Following a Wall Street Journal article claiming Elon's a partaker of illegal substances that's concerning some executives and board members of his companies and Musk's refutation of the piece, NASA took the CEO 6 against the rumors telling the press there isn't any evidence of drug use or non-compliance. Elon said he's even taken drug tests since his time smoking the J on the Joe Rogan podcast a few years ago. And you know, it's all too obvious, especially with how quickly the mainstream media got behind the story to start slinging mud, that this was just another politically motivated hit piece by woke mind virus seeks. You know, the same progressive derps who want to legalize all recreational drug use. SpaceX did share on the X that they are working with the John Deere company to bring Starlink to farming equipment so they can be driven autonomously without the farmer. So I guess that's one way to get around the decline of the American farm family. Too bad eventually there will still be nothing to farm between BlackRock, Gates, China, and all these new developments going up around rural towns like my own. There were two Starlink launches since our last episode, one from each coast and both launch on Sunday. Placing 45 more Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit. From left to right, it was the 18th and 12th flights for the two boosters. Each survived to fly another day. Then on Thursday, Falcon 9 launched Axiom Space's third private commercial crew inside the Freedom Dragon capsule, flying to the space station for its third time. The crew will dock to the ISS on Saturday and begin conducting more than 30 scientific experiments and demonstrations during their approximately two week stay. And their booster successfully touched down back at the Florida coast on landing zone one. Crowds cheering here at SpaceX Mission Control Hawthorne as we tune in to see if we stick the landing. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Again, link to my X page is below. I'll see you there and have an ominous weekend. Until next time, Godspeed. Godspeed.